This is a very interesting story. I, I do not think that uh, the interview that was conducted was intended to bring out this information. Now, uh, the presidential candidate of the new force, Nana Kwame Bediako here on our screen, attended an interview at TV3 with our friend Captain Smart. And uh, so you can understand the context of the interview. Uh, this is a platform that largely pr promotes the opposition philosophy, which is okay. And, uh, and Captain Smart is largely thought to be critical of the government, which is also okay. Um, and uh, and uh, Nana Kwame Bediako appears there. Now he's running like an, uh, he's, he's running like sort of independent movement of sorts. Often, <coughs> it is looked at by political PR people, and I have to ask Dr. Echesikanko about this. When there's an election and people are running as independent, it, it, it appears that they are running with the opposition. Uh, they are running against the government, and it, will, it should appear that they're running also against the opposition. But when that happens, it looks like they are running with the opposition somehow. So Nana Kwame Bediako is seem to be finding good officers or better officers with opposition media or media that is aligned to the opposition than media that is aligned or thought to be aligned to government because he's running not against the opposition but against government as it were. So he appears, Nana Kwame Bediako then appears on Captain Smart's show on TV3 and he's, uh, he's being questioned, okay, he's being questioned. And then he's questioned about this lady, uh, the, 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 the Belgian lady. Who came in uh, do you, if those of you are just hearing the story for the first time this is a belgian lady she was working in ghana uh, as it turned out she had worked at gh1 before a sort of stinks at gh1 and she's been working around and she was uh, began to conduct pr communications for the new force even before the new force was unveiled uh, she began to com conduct communication for the new force she seemed to be quite adept at her work she seemed to be doing her work okay and then one day issues about her citizenship came up in question and she was questioned about are you Ghanaian though? I mean, what's the point of you, a foreigner, as you look, communicating for a political party that's looking to win power in Ghana? What's the point? And then the question became legal and she was arrested by the police on the basis that she had, not that she didn't have a work permit, that she had actually faked a work permit. The complaint was that um, she had said she's a student of a particular school here in Ghana and the records show that she's not a student of the school at all. On the basis of that, her citizenship or work permit was heavily questioned and then she was released on bail uh, the action was refiled and then the decision was taken by the immigration that they have made a substantive finding about her citizenship and therefore they'll deport her according to the law it is her right to challenge that directive and that decision by the director of immigration uh, who has the power to do so and to deport anyone if the person is found to have incompetent documentation to work or remain in ghana if you have that kind of documentation that is incompetent, then the director of immigration has the power under the law to deport you. So the director of immigration exercised his authority rather than prosecuting her in court for, for an offense, exercised his authority and ordered her deportation and she was duly deported to Belgium. So that became the first big story about the new force even before the unveiling of their leader, Nana Kwame Bediako. Now, after this, the, uh, the mask was unveiled of Nana Kwame Bediako's face, and everyone knew that it was him. There was wide suspicion and speculation that it would be him, but now it was certain that Nana Kwame Bediako was leading the news force. So Nana Kwame Bediako then engages in a series of interviews. He appears on CTTV with Bernard Ablé. I watched that interview. I, I, I enjoyed it terribly. And then he's on Joy FM. I listened to that as well. Then he shows up on, on, on TV3, and you know, Captain Smart is, is, has, is about a third or fourth person interview, so he's trying to build up more content about Nana Kwame Bediako, which is useful, isn't it? So then Captain Smart asked him, where did you find Madame X? And then Nana Kwame Bediako, I don't know whether he was not alive to the political context of the answer that he was going to give, but he was being truthful. And he said to Captain Smart that it was Sami Okuje Tohablakwa who introduced me to the lady. Ah, immediately all the political antenna went up. Everybody's political antenna said, hey, wait a minute. What's going on here? I was just enjoying it. He said, then Captain Smart was also taken aback a little bit. So he was like, what are you saying? He said, yes, yes, yes. It was Sami Okujeto who introduced me because I went to Mepe when the flood occurred. And you know, that's Okujeto, a black West constituency. I went to Mepe and uh, there in Mepe, she also had been to Mepe to try and help the people uh, as, as had many Ghanaians done. And according to Nana Kwame Bediako, it was at Mepe that Sami Okujeto introduced the two of them. He didn't quite say 
that Ablakwa said they should run, he should run any business for his company. And he didn't quite say if Ablakwa knew the intentions of Nana Kwame Bediakon in terms of forming a political movement to run for election 2024, and that it was within that context that he was introducing her to assist him or not. He didn't quite, Captain Smart didn't get there. Obviously, he didn't get there because the information that had come out was clearly not intended. And anyone with political antenna would have seen that something has been said which ought not to have been said. I, I don't find any problem with it. It's just that we have to know that there's further questions for, for, from us to Nanakwa Mibediako. So the question to Nanakwa Mibediako is that when Ablakwa introduced the lady to you, was he aware that you had a political movement coming? Had you discussed the political movement with the NDC and, and, the, and NDC, NDC actors like Ablakwa? Did you discuss that with them? Was he aware? Was he asking her to support your activities in that movement? Or was it just a simple introduction that the two of you can work? Ablakwa clearly knows what this lady does and also must know that Nanakwa Mibediako is a businessman. I'm not sure whether at that particular time he was aware I guess he was, but I don't know, that, uh, that uh, Nanakwa Mbediako was up to a political movement. By that time, the new force thing was already out. It's been out for a very long time. And, and so maybe he was aware, if he was aware. And the last question is, is the NDC working with Nanakwa Mbediako to hopefully unseat the MPP administration in December or November's election? Is that, that's the question we have put. If you have an answer, please text, is the NDC working actively? Does the NDC need the support of movements like... Uh, Nanakwa Mibediako and others sort of draw attention to something wrong that the NPP is doing and hopefully they will get the advantage because they have a bigger political party. Can the NDC prosecute their own agenda without the help of any political party or any movement or creating movements to mushroom around so that it creates a certain context for the election? I don't know the answer to these questions, but this is just an interesting uh, story of gossip value that came out from that interview uh, that we watched on Onuya TV with, uh, with Captain Smarter. That, that was funny. That was really funny. 29 minutes.